good evening friends amongst us we have justice vidam kumar and as usual we will be taking the session in an interactive form and i will read the question and justice vidam kumar will explain the same issues in a more explicit manner as usual people love to understand from him and that's why on our request which we did receive on whatsapp as well as on the emails etc we keep on requesting and he also is always willing to see to that so the question is at about 11 am on a sunday while a lady aged 27 years was alone in her house a person aged about 38 years and who claimed to be a friend of her husband came asking for her husband she told the person that her husband had gone to the market to purchase some vegetables and fish and would return in half an hour she asked the visitor to be seated and said that she would make some tea in the meanwhile while she was busy making the tea the visitor stealthily came to the kitchen and clasped her from behind intending to outrage her modesty with a loud protest she shook herself free and pushed the intruder who immediately left the house she narrated her bitter experience to her husband who told her that although he knew the visitor the latter was not his friend he asked her to call the police and make a complaint she called the officer in charge of the police station sho for short and narrated the entire incident amounting to an offence punishable under section 354 ipc the sho asked her whether she had any physical or mental disability and she as well as her husband replied in the negative even though the sho was convinced about the commission of the offence and he made a routine entry in the general diary daily diary book about the telephonic information he asked her to go to the police station and give a complaint as the victim was disinclined to do so she sent a letter by post to the district superintendent of police dsp for short narrating the whole incident and stating that the conduct of the sho amounted to refusal to record her information and requested the dsp to investigate the case on receipt of the letter the dsp asked for an explanation from this sho on the following lines why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under section 154 crpc why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under the section 154 crpc why did instead of asking the victim to go to the police station and make a complaint the sho himself did not go to the police go to the house of the victim and do the needful in view of the proviso to section 160 sub clause 1 crpc on the advice taken from the assistant public prosecutor app for short the sho gave the following reply any information given on telephone to the police is not for the purpose of lodging an fir but to request the police to reach the place of occurrence by paras 113 and 14 of siddharth vishisht at the rate manu sharma was a state in city of delhi 2010 volume 6 scc 1 where a telephonic information is received from an unknown person since the procedural formalities such as reducing the information into writing and reading it over to the informant and obtaining his or her signatures on the transcribed information etc cannot be completed the same cannot be treated as an fir right paras 33 to 37 suraji sarkar was state of west bengal 2013 volume 2 scc 146 it is only if the victim lady was mentally or physically disabled so temporarily or permanently should the sho go to her residence and record the information as mandated by clause a of the second proviso to section 1541 crpc here he had ascertained from the victim that she had no dis such disability and she should have gone to the police station and lodged the first information report statement fir for short the proviso to section 161 sub clause 1 crpc exempting certain categories of victims from being required to attend the police station is applicable only during the course of investigation here since the fir has been not been registered there could not be any investigation the supreme court has ruled that registration of an fir is a condition precedent for commencement of an investigation by the para 1 of mahindra versus state of punjab 2001 air sc 2113 and para 25 of shashikant versus cpi air 2000 sc 351 so my questions to you is as follows we have made the proposition the second question is Was not the SHO bound to treat the telephonic information as an FIR? Yes. Now, in the particular case, the SHO did not treat the telephonic information as an FIR. 
and he ultimately when an explanation was sought by the dsp he got the opinion of the assistant public prosecutor and gave his answer uh, now actually on receipt of telephonic information which was a complete information and not a cryptic information and uh, which was duly entered by him in the general diary that is in the daily register book the sho was bound to enter the same in the fir book also and treat the same as the first information statement and record it as a first information statement uh, this is the view taken by the very same supreme court in uh, ram singh bawali bawaji jadeja versus state of gujarat 1994 Volume Two, SEC Six Eight Five. The judges are K. Jayachandra Reddy and N. P. Singh. N. P. Singh being the uh, author. Again, in Sunil Kumar versus State of Madhya Pradesh, A. R. Nineteen Ninety Seven, Supreme Court Nine Forty, corresponding to Nineteen Ninety Seven, Volume Ten, SEC Five Seven Zero. Justice M. K. Mukherjee, author, and R. N. Kripal. Again. Ashok Dabbarma was a state of Tripura, 2014, Volume 4, SCC 747, Justice K S P Radhakrishnan, the author, and Vikramajit Sen. Uh, again, the Constitutional Bench decision in Lalita Kumari was a state of UP, A R 2014, Supreme Court 187, corresponding to 2014, Volume 2, SCC Page 1. Five judges. Author of the judgment is Justice P. Sadashiva. Now, in all these cases, the Supreme Court has held that when the first information telephone, when the information regarding the commission of a cognizable offence is received through telephone, and if it is a complete information, not a cryptic information, the the officer is bound to treat it as the FIR, make an entry in the general diary, general diary, and also in the FIR register. And he is to treat it as the affair. He has to register it as the affair. He has no other alternative. So that is the answer to this question. So he is bound to treat it as an affair, especially when he made an entry in the general diary. That's my answer.